Hi, this is Amanda Brummett with the Working Well and Capel Committee of the Capel Chamber of Commerce. I'm here today with Dr. Harvey Castro. He's the president of Trusted ER and a board certified emergency medicine physician. Thanks for being here, Dr. Castro. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it. Yeah, so we are going to talk about a topic today that we are all tired of hearing about, but that there is so much important information out there and um, that hopefully if we can get some good advice and do what all the doctors say, that hopefully we can stop talking about it soon. <laughs> um, so probably first and foremost, Dr. Castro, is, um, you know, I know we're hearing a lot out of the medical community. What can lay people do to protect themselves and to protect others from COVID? Yeah, good question. You know, I, I'm really a basic kind of guy. I think just go back to the basics. If you are known to have a medical condition, diabetes, heart failure, heart, congestive heart failure, then it's important to take your medicine because if you're not controlling your diseases that you already know that, let's just say mankind has uh, come up with ways of curing or maybe addressing these diseases and you're not taking your medicine, then it, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. So when I am asked this question, I always tell people, number one, make sure you take care of your medical conditions. Number two, if you know that you are propensity of being diabetic or gaining weight, then you need to start working out or losing weight or working on those things. The other thing is, um, I mentioned this a lot, I think it's important to sleep. If you don't sleep, your immune system will be low. Make sure you're resting, make sure you control your stress. These are basic things, but it can actually make a difference and now more than ever. Obviously, our government is telling us, wash your hands, keep your social distance, uh, wear your mask, obviously do those things. Um, I would take it to the next level when you're out and about and you come home, take off your shoes and leave them at the door or in the garage. That way you're not cross-contaminating. Make sure you're always washing your hands. Um, the other thing is I truly believe um, in vitamins. I think it's important to make sure you're taking your basic vitamins, your vitamin C, your multivitamin. Depending on your diet, you may not need it, but most Americans um, fall short in some part of it. The other thing that is important, I think, to help your immune system, we mentioned sleep, we mentioned vitamins. I'm a proponent of uh, taking Inconacea if your doctor allows it. It's basically an herb that helps increase your immune system. I always tell my patients, hey, um, if you are not at risk and we go through the risk factors, uh, basically most people are not, then take it as if it was birth control. You take it three weeks on, one week off, and that helps increase your immune system. Sleeping well, decreasing your stress, all of these basic things, I really think it makes a huge difference. But keep the basics, sleeping, drinking water, and you'll see your immune system will actually go up. Oh, that is so helpful. And it sounds like for the most part, those are all things that we should, we should do regardless of COVID, um, yes. just to be really healthy. Awesome. So another thing that I um, worry about is people both delaying care for um, urgent things that need care that are non-COVID related, but also not being sure when to go to their doctor or to the hospital for COVID-related symptoms. So can you walk us through any specific symptoms you want people to watch for and then when they should seek treatment and how they should do that? Yeah, that's a hard question and a very good one. Obviously, use common sense. Uh, I like using this analogy with mothers. Mothers knew, know really well when their babies are sick or not, even though they're not talking or saying they know their child. I feel like, in a sense, you know your body. You know when something's wrong. Um, I would always be on the side of caution because it's, we're speaking to such a large spectrum of people. There may be someone out there that has multiple medical conditions. And so that person, if they're having fever or shortness of breath, or maybe they don't mount the fever, maybe they just get shortness of breath and cough, well, that person probably needs to go to the ER. Someone that has no medical conditions, uh, healthy, uh, with a cough or no fever may not be anything. So I would say in the, to air things on the side of safety, Go to your healthcare provider. If you need to, we're always open at Trusted 24-7. Come to us. Let us evaluate it. you. If it's not an emergency, we'll say, hey, this is not an emergency. You can go home. But if it is something that you need uh, attention, we can do that. Also, take advantage of the technology that's out there. Some people are like, you know what? I don't want to be exposed to COVID. So then there's a lot of telemedicine uh, doctors now that are willing to see you from home. And so take advantage of that technology. Some of the simple things that you can do um, is I have a temperature uh, thermometer at home and I check it. Um, if I'm not feeling quite right, I just check and make sure maybe I'm running a temperature that I don't know about. I know my body temperature. So if it went up a half a degree or a degree, I know there's something wrong with me um, or some early signs. So do those things as well. But listen to your body. Uh, don't overdo it, especially now. And then make sure you keep the basics. Wash your hands, uh, wear your mask, and keep your distance. Okay, thanks. And then my last question is, there is 
a ton of noise out in the world right now. And there's so much data and so many experts and scientists and non-experts pretending to be both. Um, so what, what are the go-to sources for lay people? Where do you recommend your patients get information about COVID-19? Yeah, excellent question. I continuously tell my patients and my friends to please go to the CDC website. That's what all the doctors are doing. We're going to the website, to the government and saying, hey, what is the latest and greatest and what are the stats and what are the government recommendations? That website is uh, updated daily. And the nice thing too is for people that speak another language, it actually has multiple languages on there. Then the other part to that is all that information that's on there is public domain. So you're welcome to copy it, paste it, put it on your website and tell others about whatever it is. They have excellent graphs on explaining COVID and the new diseases and, and why and why not and a lot of the frequently asked questions. So that's my main source that I go for everything, okay. especially COVID. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So just as a recap, general immune boosting activities and general wellness is uh, one of our best ways to protect ourselves use our intuition and common sense on those symptoms, and if in doubt, get treatment. And CDC website is your trusted resource. For sure, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Very good. Well, Dr. Castro, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for all of the information, and thank you for being part of the Coppell Chamber of Commerce. I appreciate you guys, and let us know how we can serve the community and how we can do things. If anyone needs anything, we're more than happy to go to any sporting event or anything that the community needs for us to come out and just help. So we're here to help.